back on the main stage and I hope that uh, if you have chosen to stay with us that means that you are very interested in fostering the MSP through stakeholder involvement in national and international planning process. This is the workshop we're going to start right now and I am very happy to share the stage again with someone local and very live and present here and that will be Inga Jakobson who will be moderating this session. Inga, the floor is yours. Hello, my dear friends. My name is Inge Jakobsana, and I am moderator of this very first workshop session. It's fostering MSP through stakeholders' involvement uh, in national and transnational processes. So I think you all are quite aware that stakeholder engagement is very crucial for success of any organization. Of course, it takes some time and effort to communicate with the stakeholders, but in the long term, it leads to the savings. And what is also very important, that it also builds trust to credibility uh, into organization. So today we have pretty full agenda. We very uh, experienced practitioners, and I'm pretty sure that you will learn a thing or two how to communicate with the stakeholders. But before I giving the floor to the speakers, I would like to uh, address to you Dear participants, there is a poll number one, so uh, I would like to kindly ask you to answer the question. And now I would like to ask first speaker to the stage. It's Alda Nicodemus. Alda is a head of WhatsApp Secretariat. Uh, more than 15 years she's been involved in a various uh, spatial activities all across Baltic Sea and she's been involved in other international matters such as ESPON, um, Baltic Sea Region Agenda 21 and uh, what is most important, she is the best boss that I ever had. So Alda, please, uh, I would like to welcome you on stage, the floor is yours. Hello again. So I am privileged to, to greet you uh, all again today. And now I will tell a bit about maritime spatial planning in the Baltic Sea region. Just give you a short overview what's going on and what has been done. Um, first of all, I would like again to recall to Vasab the, that means vision and strategies around the Baltic Sea. This, this is cooperation of ministers of Baltic Sea region countries, which are responsible for spatial planning and development. This cooperation, this intergovernmental network started, was established and start to be operating in 1992. That means that next year we will celebrate 30 years anniversary. And the key and main strategic document at the moment for WASAB is WASAB long-term perspective for the territorial development of the Baltic Sea region. And as you maybe heard to, uh, this morning that this uh, this document is now is being updated and we will have a new document again. Uh, in the middle of this slide you can see how this territorial cohesion, cohesion perspective should look like in 2030. And uh, I, I would like to emphasize that maritime spatial planning is one of VASA priorities. Uh, again, about our cooperation with other international organization convention in the Baltic Sea. It's welcome WASAB cooperation in MSP. The main idea was uh, to, to start to cooperate uh, closely. Even WASAB, uh, MSP has been on WASAB agenda already 20 years, but uh, we, we, need to, we need to have partners to, to cooperate with, and therefore, uh, back in 2010, Helcom Vasab MSP Working Group was established. And the key question, still, which is still alive, is how to ensure coherent MSP across the borders. Uh, 
Helcom Vasab Working Group has produced several strategic documents and uh, guide guidelines like maritime spatial planning principles, maritime spatial planning roadmap, which is also now being updated, and uh, guidelines for maritime spatial planning. Uh, in this slide, you can see the overview of MSP status in, in the Baltic Sea region. As you can find, the, still these uh, maritime spatial plans are in different stages. Uh, like uh, uh, several countries has a, uh, have approved them. Uh, some countries like Germany and Lithuania are already uh, working and uh, finalizing the second generation maritime spatial plans and uh, the country as Russia, which is also in uh, cooperating in WASAB and Helcom Frame also is uh, on the way to the develop MSP roadmap for Russia. And in WASAB website, you can easily find this updated informa information regularly regarding uh, the stage which uh, countries have regarding the uh, maritime spatial plans. And what I also would like to emphasize that the huge role for official MSP uh, processes has been played, played by different projects. Some of them are already uh, after in the beginning, started in the beginning of this century, and some of them are just ongoing. And uh, regarding uh, stakeholder involvement, I, sh I would like to emphasize that Balsi Plan was the, f the project which was targeted. This issue also participate, Baltic Scope, Pan-Baltic Scope, and of course uh, other projects as well. Uh, regarding new regional MSP roadmap for the next decade. It was already mentioned by several speakers in, in the panel discussion uh, that this uh, new roadmap, uh, draft new roadmap has been developed. I should say that it's already agreed by WASAP committee members, but still um, in the coming days, hopefully, Helcom heads of the de delegation will also agree on that. And the goal of this roadmap is to strengthen joint efforts and coherence throughout the Baltic Sea region to implement maritime spatial plans. There are altogether five objectives which, uh, which, contr which contributes to the achieving of the goal, and these objectives has particular actions uh, foreseen how to do it. Uh, the first objective is uh, that implementation of maritime spatial plans builds knowledge base for the new MSP cycle. It also improves regional policy coherence and contributes to achieving progress towards good environmental status of the Baltic Sea, which is overall target for all of us. It also contributes to sustainable economy and, to, yeah, and address, addresses climate change mitigation and, uh, and adaptation. Uh, now back to stakeholders' involvement. What has been done within uh, Helcom WASAP cooperation? So, as I mentioned already, so we have developed these Baltic Sea MSP principles, and one of the principles is participation and transparency. And it states that all relevant authorities and stakeholders, including coastal municipalities as well as national and regional bodies, should be involved in maritime spatial planning initiatives at the earliest possible stage, and it has been proved by many countries that this stakeholders engagement for the, from the very beginning is crucial to get this uh, consensus of, of the plan. As other uh, uh, framework, I would like to underline these guidelines on transboundary consultation, public participation and cooperation that have been approved also years ago. And 
these guidelines state that aim is to ensure stakeholder involvement within countries, across the borders, and on pan-Baltic scale. Uh, guidelines also specify stakeholders' consultation steps, propose steps in organizing stakeholder involvement in transboundary consultation process, suggest engagement of stakeholders best at national level and well-organized stakeholder groups at pan-Baltic level. And uh, last but not least, they also underline that subsidiarity principle has to be still maintained, that uh, different levels are involved and heard here. So, thank you for, for the, your time. And now I, I would like to ask again Inga to continue. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Aldo, very much for your presentation. And now we can move uh, from more transnational uh, approach, more to the national approach. And uh, now I would like to ask on the stage Dr. Christina uh, Weidemann. Christina uh, is senior expert uh, for environmental and special issues working for Baltic Environmental Forum. She has a PhD. She works more than 25 years on the field. And in addition, she is responsible uh, for development of report within capacity for SP project regarding stakeholders' involvement in MSP processes. And what more I can say about Christina, Christina has uh, achieved this um, magic uh, golden cut, I believe so, uh, being a scientist and being as well as practitioner. So uh, welcome, uh, Christina, on the stage. Good afternoon, everyone in Riga. Good afternoon around the Baltic Sea and good afternoon also globally. I'm really pleased to be today here in this MSP forum and workshop which is dedicated to stakeholder involvement. As Inga already introduced, I will present the results of a study which has been conducted in the frame of capacity for MSP project. Uh, which aims to analyze different approaches and mechanisms which have been implemented um, in the countries around the Baltic Sea. So the commission is studied, uh, is launched by uh, WASAP Secretariat and Baltic Environmental Forum uh, has the honor to implement it. So what is the aim of this study? So we aim to collect and to review different information on lessons learned, conclusions, outcomes, recommendations from national MSP processes, from transboundary cooperation pro uh, projects, as well as from scientific publications. The analysis addresses three uh, phases of maritime spatial planning. So, of course, it's a development phase where mainly countries have been putting a lot of efforts in last years. But we also try to analyze what kind of stakeholder involvement practice are taken in countries for implementation and monitoring and follow up. So to conduct this study, um, you can see here a scheme with a methodological framework. Um, the input is coming, as I already said, from completed projects, which are in the Baltic Sea region 15, which has been looked at. Uh, scientific publications uh, from 2014-2020, um, 76, and in, uh, information of national MSP processes. So we conducted interviews, uh, surveys to get this information, as well as publicly published uh, sources. So, and what kind of um, aspects we analyzed and, and where we see the conclusions. One is related to practices. Another one is related to stakeholder identification, mapping, uh, 
analysis, and third one is on communication practice. And all this is presented in a report, which is drafted and already sent for feedback from main key stakeholders in region or key planners, uh, which are in the uh, Helcom WhatsApp MSP working group, as well as uh, in capacity for MSP project. So what we have been looking at when analyzing stakeholder involvement practice, we have found out that one of the key tools is so-called stakeholder involvement plan or interaction plan, uh, which is set up at the beginning of MSP process um, to see who, how, when has to be involved in uh, maritime spatial planning. And uh, these plans have been established almost in all countries around the Baltic Sea. However, the details are very different. Some countries also include communication tools uh, and different methods in which stage they should be applied. The plans uh, specify also shall the stakeholders be only to informed in certain steps of the development of plans or we need consultation of these plans or we also organize different active engagement activities. Here you can see some overview on these uh, involvement practices for each, stake, uh, each phase of maritime spatial planning. So when talking about development phase, then the key instruments have been to ask stakeholders to contribute with data and information, assessments, um, also to take part in advisory committees or different stakeholder groups, working groups, thematic or transdisciplinary uh, ones. Uh, some countries have used uh, scenario building methods, visioning also to support the process or also GIS platforms. The implementation phase um, for those countries who already has a second round of uh, maritime spatial plans or who have recently adopted, they see it's very valuable to keep established uh, cooperation networks like supervisory, advisory committees or boards. Uh, also to launch different detailed planning uh, initiatives for specific areas or for spe specific topics which are also more linked to coastal governance aspects. And um, one more aspect is licensing activities where also stakeholders are involved very in intensively in some countries, uh, really to get opinions on envisaged projects uh, and um, development initiatives. So far, related to monitoring, uh, countries have been considering uh, stakeholders to ask provide input as well as to give a feedback through evaluation process. What is on communication practice? It has been acknowledged that communication along the whole process is very important. It is essential activity and we shouldn't underestimate the efforts and resources which is needed for that. Countries have been taking different strategies, um, organizing communication internally or also outsourcing companies uh, for specific to organize um, um, communication activities. And for that also dedicated com communication plans have been uh, drafted and approved and implemented. Various tools and channels are used to communicate uh, with stakeholders and the stakeholders are communicated individually or different groups or um, also combination of groups. Now I would like to present some key conclusions and recommendations, uh, which have been also integrated already in the draft report. And probably those who will be interested to receive the reports can later approach also Inga after this workshop and ask uh, for possibility to read and to comment and give your, your own contribution to that. So some key conclusions today. So, as already mentioned several times, it's very important to establish uh, strategy or plan for stakeholder involvement and communication. 
that this plan also should contain measurable indicators. This helps to monitor the achievements in communication and stakeholder involvement against the set objectives. Um, what is also important is that when the plan is adopted and made in a force that uh, certain resources are allocated for dissemination of these outcomes in a way to make a conclusion on one of the key stop steps. Um, really, the adopted plan needs to be also clearly communicated. When analyzing different mechanisms and tools, uh, then planners and practitioners uh, have recognized the importance of thematic workshops and events. And that these have been most effective to get information, to get feedback, to discuss different solutions. And um, however, it has been noted that local stakeholders and regional stakeholders have been, might be less involved so far. So, and in future, probably in implementation phase, that local and regional stakeholders could be involved more uh, intensively. And the uh, comment has been also that the discussions need to be organized openly and transparency that uh, should be ensured. It's one of the key principles of Helcom WASAB, uh, uh, but it needs to be strengthened that all information is timely available and different alternatives are seen by all stakeholders. Personal and individual communication are also important. This particularly has been big barrier and obstacle in the last year due to COVID situation, but also during this last year, many countries have made uh, public consultations uh, on draft documents. So this has been very critical and uh, important. However, yeah, we know that it's not so easy nowadays. And last, not least, is related to resources that uh, communication experts have been pointed out that funding really needs to be allocated to this activity, that it's not only money which should be invested in data, knowledge, but also we have to communicate this knowledge and uh, data properly to our stakeholders and to wider audience. In that way, we would successfully achieve our communication and outreach objectives. Many thanks for attention and we will have a possibility to discuss these uh, conclusions also in our panel discussion later today in this session. Thank you. All right, thank you, Christina, for setting the scene. And now, before we move to the case studies, I would like to see the results of poll number one. So, let's see the results. Well, we see that uh, most of uh, respondents, most of participants, show the option that they profession, uh, that they represent uh, MSP authority and they communicate with stakeholders on a daily basis. I think that's great. <laughs> and uh, and uh, there is another question that was also very popular is regarding uh, the one that you are stakeholders and uh, the authorities have been uh, actively communicated with you. So that's great that we see that uh, there is a progress with the communication and uh, we all know that it's the key of success. All right, and now we can move with the case studies. We have three very interesting and different case studies. And the first case study is uh, regarding Russian Federation. Our first speaker is Larisa Danilova. She is the general director of the research uh, institute uh, Yermak North the West. Larissa has a very extensive international experience and now she is working very actively with the Russian MSP roadmap and I must say that she is a real engine, real driving force and uh, force woman <laughs> of MSP process in Russian Federation. So Larissa, the floor is yours. Thank you. Hello, everyone. 
do you hear me? Uh, I will uh, say a little bit about the stakeholders' involvement in Russia. Uh, this strategy for stakeholders' involvement was produced by the project capacity for MSP. Uh, yes. Yes. Oi, sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'll try to use to, to change the slide. <coughs> Sorry for this, I'm not ready really. And I can't change my slide. Uh, Larissa, maybe next. Sorry, I, I can't change my slide. Uh, uh, oh, okay. Now it works, no? Okay, sorry for this. Uh, and what is the situation in Russia? I will not speak about the theory because uh, my colleagues said about a lot, but what is the specific uh, specificity of Russian stakeholders' involvement? We have some challenges uh, that are because Russia don't have MSP framework, so we don't have um, the authority who is responsible for this. And uh, the second one is that the regional specificity of our coastal regions would have their own tasks and their own specific, uh, specific marine activities. Uh, and there are large differences uh, in physical and geographical futures of these regions. Uh, and the third next one is the government and main stakeholders are not convinced and uh, don't see the large economic benefits of MSP. And the last one, but not the least, that we have a lot of uh, sea area, so no real competition for maritime space uh, in most of the territorial seas of um, uh, and uh, exclusive economic zone. So uh, we have a lot of challenges, but we uh, try to do our best in the project to work with them. Uh, so what did we do, what we decided to do? Uh, first one, <clears throat> uh, no, no, not this slide, please. Yes. Uh, what is our goal? The goal was to develop approaches how to interact with, uh, interact with MSP stakeholders and authorities to include them into the Russian MSP roadmap and MSP in Russia development. So we need to identify of the stakeholders groups with their roles and influence on MSP decisions to select channels of communication and to map stakeholders and produce the list of contacts of them uh, to can, uh, contact with them uh, as uh, effective as it is possible. Uh, the actions of the project, they were uh, information, uh, questionnaire. Uh, I will say a few words about it a little bit later the construction of Russian MSP supporting chain of scientific organizations and public organizations, uh, and uh, the development of interactive and judgment tools, MSP game, for example. And what are the large related um, processes? First one is the inclusion of proposals to improve MSP in the Russian regional programs of the ocean decade for the sustainable development. And the second one is coordination of MSP with blue growth initiatives as it was done uh, for the Black Sea, for example. What methods were chosen? First of all, we define target groups. I will not say what they are because uh, um, that is theory and you can see it's in shared presentation. Um, and the, what will be the expected effects of this? Firstly, the most acceptable MSP solution from an environmental, economic and technical point of view, more efficient use of information, better conflict management, increasing the legitimacy of the decision-making process, better informing of stakeholders and improving the strategic capacity of the decision-makers. <clears throat> we had a lot of uh, informing events in the last two years. Uh, in all our uh, marine regions of Russia, uh, there was some, some like 10 uh, events on the moment. 
and we will have once more event for the um, Caspian Sea, uh, maybe in October 2021. Uh, uh, the stakeholder sur survey, the results of the survey are shared on the WhatsApp uh, portal, and you can see uh, it here. Uh, what is really interesting that uh, the regional uh, authorities and regional stakeholders are um, quite in a good position, if we speak about MSP, and we defined the uh, marine activities that are very uh, sensitive for for the regions and which they want to, for which they want to transfer um, power authorities on the regional level. Most of them are uh, the marine tourism, uh, especially protected uh, uh, nature areas of the regional uh, significance, uh, coastal fishing, uh, and uh, uh, protection of underwater cultural heritage and uh, uh, um, artificial constructions. That is about the development of MSP Interactive Games. We used this uh, tool uh, quite successfully in the project Baltic Rim, for example, to involve stakeholders of uh, underwater cultural heritage. Uh, what are our intermediate results on the moment? Uh, um, we have uh, a half on a year to finalize our activity due to Corona. And what we have on the moment? Uh, regional stakeholders are informed about MSP. Coastal regions as a whole are quite interested in the process. Uh, the main types of maritime activities, uh, the management of which in the option of the regions should be transferred to the region level um, are identified. Uh, and the promotion of MSP is supported by the Ministry of Natural Resources and Environment and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs of the Russian Federation. And what is new, it is supported by the Science and Expert Council of the Marine Board under the government of the Russian Federation. And what will be done? Uh, firstly, the original workshop for the stakeholders of the Caspian Sea. It will be in the autumn and the presentation of the MSP roadmap, uh, Russian MSP roadmap on the strategy forum and the scientific conference in October 2021. Thank you for your attention. That's all. All right. Thank you, Larissa, for your interesting it's presentation. Right. Well, be very fast. and uh, <laughs> yeah, indeed. And now we can move on uh, to our second case study. It's Germany. And our next presenter is Dr. Kira Guy. Uh, Kira is working for BSH and uh, she also have, uh, has, uh, is, ex is experienced ac academic working uh, <laughs> at different scientific institutions and to be honest, she has a very impressive package. Bachelor in Zoology, <laughs> a Master in Conservation and PhD in Geography. So Kira could really give a comprehensive and, and a holistic, uh, let's say, view on stakeholder involvement issues. So Kira, you have your floor here, so we welcome you. Thank you very much for the very kind introduction. Um, <laughs> I'll do my best to run you through um, my um, slides, which I'm presenting on behalf of the uh, Federal Maritime and Hypergraphic Agency in Germany. So I'd like to talk uh, to you about the ongoing um, process of redrafting the maritime spatial plans for the German EEZ. You might know that this is ongoing at the moment. It's a revision process of plans that have uh, first come into force in 2009. So that's quite a while ago. So now is a good time to be revising these plans. And the process is sort of just about reaching the second draft plan stage. And we very much hope that there's going to be a completed brand new plan sometime later this year. So just to briefly explain the, the process, um, it's actually quite a long process, um, as you all know. Maritime spatial planning takes a while. So it started this particular revision in 2018 with a status report and um, then went through all these various stages, um, accompanied 
obviously all the way through by a strategic environmental assessment and also, and that's the first part perhaps of stakeholder involvement by a scientific advisory board. So that's really just a bunch of, of scientists, of academics um, representing different disciplines, kind of accompanying all these stages, perhaps giving suggestions, giving feedback, giving maybe you know some recommendations or input to that process. So let's look specifically at the objectives of stakeholder involvement in the current, in the ongoing process. Now, the first objective, which is going to sound very familiar to, to all of you, I'm sure, is, is to improve the baseline for planning. So that's really very much about making sure that all the latest information or the latest sector data and also the priorities um, are understood by the planning authorities. So that regards existing use but also future uses and developments like shipping routes, like renewable energy targets, um, like nature conservation, like defence interests. So making sure that all this information is present, is up to date and is kind of there on the table to, to be considered. That is linked, of course, also to um, getting a clearer idea of priorities, and also possible conflicts. So, for example, any area-based priorities that are already assigned and um, new targets, new policy drivers as well. Mm. The third objective is to improve any draft plan that has been produced to formal and also and show in a minute informal consultation. And then, of course, as we all have um, agree, um, it's a chance to promote understanding and also acceptance of the plan by stakeholders. So nothing terribly, terribly new or innovative about any of these, but um, for Germany, um, it is to some degree actually also um, a fairly new and um, more broad um, process of stakeholder involvement because um, for the first time there have been informal um, tools or informal stages of, of involvement um, in the form of dedicated expert meetings and sectoral workshops that did take place quite early in that particular planning process. And you can see again the various stages that the process is running through. You can see in red that the mandatory um, steps of involvement and then in yellow the ones that have been added I suppose in recognition that they make perfect sense and actually produce very useful results and inputs to the process and you can see also where we are right now it's just before the second consultation round which is hopefully going to start soon. So the methods, again, also no great surprises, really. Um, a lot of um, information gathering taking place through these uh, sector workshops I just mentioned, but also some specific expert reports that were commissioned specifically, especially, um, for example, on shipping. Then the consultation, also the interministerial consultation, which is quite important. I'll come back to that. Uh, again, the public consultation on the second draft, um, but also we were talking about communication earlier. The whole thing is flanked by a kind of ongoing um, communication and presentation of where the process is at by the homepage, by your blog, and I've already mentioned also the scientific advisory board. Some of the challenges that we experience, well, the first one, obviously, since it has been such a strange year, is COVID um, and uh, the fact that any consultations have had to happen online. So that's been an interesting one, maybe also a test bed. Um, it actually worked surprisingly well, but the situation wasn't helped by time constraints, which did reduce opportunities for the more informal types of involvement, um, which would have been nice to have. It's also obvious, and again, we all know this, that stakeholders aren't all equal, and um, the roles are then also actually fairly unequal to some degree. And um, some stakeholders clearly more vociferous, shall we say, more powerful perhaps, um, more able perhaps also to articulate their interests. Others perhaps not quite so well placed, not quite so, so articulate perhaps, or able also to communicate their concerns. 
Another challenge is that planning decisions, um, once they are made in the first draft or then now later the second draft plan, can be quite hard then for stakeholders to understand. And that's because everyone gives an input, you know, in, then trade-off decisions are made and it goes in favour of some, but clearly not in favour of others. And the reasoning behind that is actually a really, really important part of that ongoing communication process we are finding. Um, so that may be one thing that um, is useful to take forward also to make sure that this, yeah, the, the reasons why certain decisions are taken the way they are need to be communicated quite clearly to stakeholders. Other challenges are related to data. Of course, um, data is always in short supply. We could always do with more data, more precise data, not always available when decisions have to be taken. And there's problems um, still with respect to cumulative effects. It's still quite tricky to actually assess how um, yeah, um, serious these effects are. And of course, the plans from other countries, neighboring countries are only just becoming available. So the transboundary element has also been a bit of a challenge to some degree. Um, not a bad one, just in the sense that we're only learning now altogether how we are planning to use the sea, the North Sea and the Baltic Sea in the future. And then to conclude, just very briefly, some lessons learned over the last two years or almost three years, really. And I've already highlighted the value of these informal workshops, these sector-based exchanges. That really echoes um, some of the um, results also coming from the Baltic, from the capacity for MSP project. Um, explaining the role and also the scope of MSP, that's an ongoing thing. Um, it never stops including the fact that the plan, once it is actually available, is not everything. MSP is not just about producing this plan, it's this ongoing um, process, it's about implementing the plan, it's about continuing this process of dialogue and exchange, looking towards the future of uh, using the sea. So it's important, we think, as a lesson to flank that formal planning process with the more informal exchange and the more ongoing types of dialogue um, especially in our case, also with the relevant ministries. Um, we've been asked to um, put down what the achievements are we are most proud of, I guess. And well, of course, we're very proud of, of the fact that there is hopefully going to be a new plan. We also do think that the stakeholder process is much improved compared to the first one, which does go back to 2008, 2009. So it was a long time ago. And we're also quite proud that we did have some very good cross-border collaboration through the projects at the informal level, but then also through formal transboundary consultations. That has been really good. And we're very pleased, especially that we've had an opportunity to, to learn a lot really from the transboundary projects and the opportunities these have brought. I think that's it. Yes, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kira. Uh, thank you indeed for uh, for your interesting presentation and my congratulations on on your plan and i hope that uh, communication will continue and the dialogue will be improved also in next stages of msp so thank you on that and now i would like to uh, introduce you with the third case third case is uh, regarding North Sea. So it's a little bit different perspective to have some fresh ideas, some fresh news, uh, views on the topic. And that's why we have here Yolanda Schmal. Yolanda is representing uh, North Sea Commission and the province of uh, North Holland. <laughs> and um, I think she will uh, teach you quite quite of many tips, very practical ones, how to deal with the stakeholders and maybe sometimes with uh, these hard groups. And uh, so I, I will maybe just let her to speak. And uh, Yolanda, you're, you're on stage, so the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you. Hello, everyone. Good to uh, be here. I'm Yolanda Schmal from the province of North Holland and the CPMR North Sea Commission. And that's actually the first slide I wanted to show you to uh, explain a little bit uh, where I'm from because the CPMR is um, a conference of peripheral and maritime regions, which 
are over 150 regions in uh, Europe and the North Sea Commission has 32 members in eight countries and it is a cooperation between uh, regions on a political level and there's a close relation with the Interreg North Sea program and they actually lobbied for a dedicated Interreg North Sea program. And one of the projects in this North Sea region program is the North Sea project, which is about trying to find coherence between many different forces on the North Sea, like shipping and energy and mar marine protected areas. And um, with all stakeholders involved, because uh, the province of North Holland is a member of this project, a partner, uh, representing the entire North Sea Commission regions. And our role in the project is to focus on the role of the regions. And well, for more information, you can see the uh, project interim findings on our website. But um, let me click to the next one. Um, I'll talk you to, through a um, few of the stakeholders' involvement um, and regional involvement um, activities that we um, organized, um, like the MSP challenge. So this is learning by doing. It's uh, the Maritime Spatial Planning Challenge is a simulation game that gives uh, maritime spatial planners insight in the challenges of sustainable planning of human activities in the marine ecosystem. And this is an ideal, ideal format um, of a quick introduction of the essence of MSP. And it builds understanding and, and shows what can be achieved through MSP and, and what cannot. <laughs> um, and it's really fun. I highly Recommend, uh, recommend it. Uh, the next one is a really fun other uh, stakeholder involvement exercise. Um, it's the Living Q exercise. It's a tool to understand stakeholders' viewpoints and perspectives and values to stimulate discussions in a living, communicative and playful environment. And the mastermind behind this stakeholder involvement exercise is actually in the audience. It's Malena Ripken. Um, but uh, let me explain you a little bit uh, what you see on these pictures, because step one, Participants are asked to have a look at statements on MSP, like um, cross-border stakeholder engagement is more effective at local level. Or another statement, a strong degree of cooperation between all governmental levels is crucial for MSP. Now, you get all of these statements and participants then need to sort these statements into categories ranging from strongly disagree to strongly agree, including a, a neutral category. So then step three is that the moderator shows each statement at a time and participants then walk around the U-shaped line in the room and position themselves uh, with which well indicates their ranking. And the moderator, of course, instantly sees the distribution of participants and, and facilitates a discussion because participants then are asked to explain why they decided to position themselves in this specific category. And they have the opportunity then to reconsider and change their ranking after discussions and position themselves perhaps in another category. It's a really fun and interactive way to, to learn about MSP. Um, my phone shut off. Yeah. Next slide is another example which we've already uh, seen by the previous speaker as well. It's the MSP Challenge Board Game. It, it's a tool which has been used in several uh, activities already. It's a tabletop strategy game where a fictitious uh, sea basin is designed on the board and different maritime activities are represented by colorful tiles like fishing and industry and tourism. And uh, it will take too much time to explain in detail, but it's been a proven technique for awareness raising about the many different interests and possibilities to collabor collaborate in MSP. And in our North Sea project, um, we discovered that MSP means quite different things in different countries. And this results in a wide variety of uh, approaches. Uh, this picture was, taking at the, uh, was taken at the start of the North Sea project to see if our MSP processes uh, were aligned. Well, not so much, apparently. Um, which brings me to uh, my final story, which is a surprising twist, because in the Netherlands, regions did not have a seat at the table when the MSP plans were discussed. Uh, 
We tried to work our way in, but we didn't succeed for quite some time um, until we joined the Norsi project. And after a few years working together in this European project, together with the Dutch ministry, who is actually a partner in the project, we created a backdoor into the MSP processes. Because of our involvement in the project, we could fix the missing link much better, which finally resulted in a structured approach to include regional voices. For the first time, um, regions were able to take a seat at the table and be, as, a, as a Kira just mentioned as well, it's, it's not a real continuous process, but we have agreed with the ministry to have a structural seat at the table to um, be a part and have our voices, regional voices heard um, in the national MSP plans. So that was a yeah, surprising success story that uh, we needed a backdoor entrance into the uh, MSP national processes. Um, and my final slide is then the lessons learned. Um, and uh, well, the basic story is that um, we need better understanding of the national approach and where regions fit in. Um, direct engagement with national process is crucial and it's been quite a struggle as I've uh, explained, but um, yeah, it's, it worked out in the end. Um, and use of tools like uh, MSP challenge or the living queue exercise to enhance sto stakeholder understanding has been a real, yeah, um, I see that my slide didn't flick, sorry. <laughs> there it is, lessons learned. Um, so the last one, the use of tools like MSP Challenge to enhance stakeholder understanding. That's um, That's been a really great way to uh, get stakeholder involvement and to learn about MSP in a fun way and to make everyone realize that everything is interconnected. Everything that happens on sea has a connection with land and we're all involved. So um, that was my presentation. Yes, hello again. It is nice to meet you once more, somewhere in the sky. And um, I also followed the comment section in uh, the uh, platform, digital platform, and I see that we really do have uh, some physical, uh, philosophical questions, some cultural differences between North Europe and West Europe and I would encourage you still to continue and share your views on different tools, approaches and mechanisms. But now let's start our panel and our panel fostering MSPs through stakeholder involvement and we will have a three panelists, um, Pille Metzpelu from Estonia, Mari Pohja Mikra from Finland and Joachim Johansson from Sweden. Let me briefly introduce these panelists and say hello to them. Pille Metzpelu is a senior uh, expert, uh, leading planning consultancy team in Estonia in developing Estonian uh, maritime spatial plan and working for consulting company Hendrickson and Co. She has a long year's experience starting from drafting methodology, uh, developing pilot case in Pernu Bay, and um, also now involved actively in hot debates uh, about and around Estonian maritime spatial plan. The second panelist, Mari Pohja Mikra, she is coordinator of the Finnish MSB cooperation. Um, she comes from Regional Council of Southwest Finland. By background, she is a natural scientist, uh, studying ecological issues in marine environment more than 20 years and dealing with nature, resource management issues, adaptive management and collaborative governance. And third panelist, Joachim Johansson, he is um, um, senior analyst at Swedish Agency for Marine and Water Management and he works on maritime special planning issues since uh, 2016 when he started to coordinate uh, development of uh, MSP proposals for Swedish marine waters. And now the plan is already more than one year in government and any, any date it should be also approved by government of Sweden. 
What is also important in, in morning session, Joachim already was present on the stage, representing uh, being a co-chair of the Helcom WhatsApp MSB working group. The aim of this panel discussion, uh, during this panel discussion, we would like to address these three leading questions. And this will also occur in commenting stage, and you would be uh, very welcome to give your uh, input, contribution, and answers on these particular questions. We would like to know what are your thoughts about most effective approaches in, in identifying and mapping stakeholders. So how you have been doing and what you could give as advice for others, some tips and tricks. The third one, uh, second one, what are successful instruments to be used in stakeholder involvement? So we heard some good um, already examples about MSP games, board games, or also like living queue exercise, but definitely there are some more successful instruments, and it would be also good if you could comment how you evaluate that the instrument has been successful. There were some thoughts already in um, in comment uh, part of the platform, but please feel free to elaborate on this evaluation aspect even more. And the last, not least, the third question is related to how to promote the outcomes gained from stakeholder involvement, and that these are included uh, in the final decision making. Now I would like to say hello to my panelists. Hello, Tere. Hello. In Tallinn. Hello. Hello in Finland and Sweden. How are you? Still fine? Still Good. Fine. Good. So you heard our panel discussion, and probably as you are at the computers, you are very actively following discussions on the um, yeah, platform and could already give some thoughts. And therefore, I would like to ask Bill, it might be at first. What is the effective approach in identifying and mapping stakeholders? How you see it from Estonian perspectives? And as you have had experience at regional level, at national level, might be you could also specify if there is some difference between these levels. Mm. Yes, thank you. And uh, thank you, Christina, for uh, keeping up the ever important issue of stakeholder involvement. Uh, it seems we cannot discuss it enough. It is uh, still very important as we are moving on with our plans. Uh, but yes, about uh, Estonian experience, um, uh, we have tried out different methods. And uh, I think our most successful uh, experience I would like to share is from the recent uh, national MSP uh, that we are conducting right now. Uh, and we, we call the action um, uh, cultural mapping. So what we did is uh, we tried to identify local, um, let's say, key factors meaning cultural and social values that are linked to maritime issues and sea in general, and key actors as well to find local discussion partners uh, for the whole MSP process. And uh, we, we carried out uh, a series of local meetings in, in five counties with uh, plenty of uh, herring sandwiches and cookies and coffee, of course, uh, and uh, we just discussed around the maps, around the shoreline maps, uh, what is important for the, for the local stakeholders, uh, what should we take into account when we are composing our plan. And uh, it did work quite well in uh, most of the counties, uh, there were around 20 um, VIPs present, uh, very important persons. Uh, in some counties a little less, but still we got uh, uh, strong uh, partners from, from the very local level. And uh, we found out that uh, this actually helped us on the way uh, as we got a better understanding of the local values. And uh, of course, we, we found the stakeholders and uh, got them involved. And maybe another uh, 
a very simple method that has actually helped us a lot is, uh, is uh, a simple mailing list. Uh, we have a link in our web portal where you can leave your email address on, on the very first page. Uh, page. So uh, uh, about 70 persons, uh, mostly entrepreneurs, uh, let's say offshore wind uh, farm developers or aquaculture farm developers, have left uh, their contact details for us and um, has said that yes, they would like to be involved and they would like to get the you know, information of the planning process. Uh, and uh, we are using this um, web list as an alternative um, information channel where we send you know, invitations to, to all our meetings and public displays, the police plays and so on. But additionally, it forms a sort of checklist where we can uh, find participants to our thematic workshops and meetings, uh, especially when we are discussing the new uses of, uh, of the sea. So wind farms and aquaculture being the most popular ones. So these are maybe our uh, experiences uh, that uh, turned out well. Of course, we, we used uh, more regular or ordinary, you know, sending letters to, to the parent organizations and uh, uh, getting the green movement and uh, fishermen's associations involved. But uh, in fact, this did not work out very well. We were not happy with the results because although we tried to contact them in the very beginning of the process, uh, not many responded and uh, the potential conflicts uh, still emerged uh, much later uh, when the planning solution was already drafted. Uh, so uh, yes, uh, it was not a very, very good experience for us. Thank but you. this was a very brief glance for to Estonia and thank you for your time. Thank you, Pille. You really said that there is a very also simple way to ask the people to sign up in for a simple mailing list. And I know that also a similar kind of approach was uh, introduced in Finland, Mari. So you also got 400 in your mailing list, 400 persons. Am I right? Can you comment on this identification aspect of stakeholders? Yes, hello, greetings from Finland, nice to see you all. Uh, yes, the, it is true that um, in a very um, early phase of our planning process, when we set up uh, an industry interaction plan, we had a good understanding that um, about the, the overall stakeholder salience theories, where we could point out that it's not just about the legit role to participate in our, in our process, but, but, it's, um, but it's more that whoever our plan effects on we have to collaborate with those people or at least inform them or engage or consult uh, depending on, on, on the sectors of other people. And that is the reason why we set up a kind of MSP collaboration network whether whether you are an authority from the ministry level or you are a local resident, you have a summer cottage in a coastal area, you are able to join in our, our network. And, and if you are part of that, you will be informed in any MSP stuff we have. Uh, and also you will be invited to any events we organize. So um, I think it's very important a kind of signal to, to the wider public that you are all welcome to participate and give your opinion. And we are interested, whatever you, whatever you know. Um, and then keeping um, in mind, especially the second planning round, we acknowledge that that um, maybe we need a new approaches to to actually um, gather all this all this local information, local knowledge, and and uh, integrate into in it into uh, into our planning, so that uh, maybe we could use some kind of social network analysis to identify the the uh, the key persons in local communities and and so on. So we could we could use them as as sharing the information, MSP information, and so. But but I I, I think this is a very important aspect to have also the locals on board not just the uh, national level or regional level. And I actually like to comment that too, if, if possible, that actually, as, as you know, we have said in, 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 um, in many um, 
forms that uh, that in Finland the planning is done in a regional level. And actually it looks like that it's a good um, level, meaning that we have these uh, regional councils and we have a bunch of uh, maritime special planners, planners in those regional councils. And they already have these established connections to any regional actors there are, uh, meaning the municipalities or municipal level politicians and so on. So we have, and we have utilized these connections in our planning. So maybe when you want to work with the locals and regional level actors, this is something that our planning system supported. Thank you, Marie. And now Joachim, Sweden is also a big marine state, a lot of stakeholders along the coastline, many municipalities and regions. How you identified these stakeholders? Can you have some one good tip for others? Well, uh, we start off with a you can say, traditional stakeholder analysis with the help of a consultant. We also did uh, some work in house. And of course, also we uh, we, we try to make a shortcut by discussing with our um, uh, brothers and sisters among agencies because they already have these stakeholder networks because it's not the first time that stakeholders are invited to big processes. MSP is just one process among others. So that's, that was the basis for our, our, our stakeholder process. We also prepared a communication strategy early on that lasted all through the process, meaning uh, many years. But for each stage, we made a specific communication plan that differed uh, quite a lot between the different stages, depending on where we was in the process. Uh, we did not have this uh, very interesting open uh, invitation to participate. And I think that's something I, at least I will take with me from this, this workshop, uh, because I think that's, that's a very good uh, way of doing it, to actually actively invite people. Maybe uh, this did not come to our mind as we have uh, our planning is, is has a scale of one to one million, meaning and we're being a bit far out, so our planning is not that coastal. However, we noticed later on in the process that we had some uh, local interest also in our planning because some wind turbines uh, turned up quite close to the shore. And of course, that, that uh, made people interested at, at local level. And of course, these comments and these views are also extremely important. Uh, so uh, I think there are differences between our process, but I also think there's a lot of things to learn from each other. So uh, it's really interesting to listen to, to the, how things were done in Finland and, and uh, Estonia. Uh, and also, we also always have to, to, to uh, to remind ourselves that stakeholders are different. And as, as Kira said before, stakeholders are not equal. They have, have different resources to participate, not only when it comes to what day you can participate. If you are doing your, uh, your daily work, you can only participate in the evenings or even only at weekends if you're a fisherman or fisher. But also, I mean, resources. Some stakeholders, of course, they have a lot of resources. They can contribute a lot, uh, such as the uh, NGOs, the big green NGOs, for example. Uh, if they decide so, they can contribute a lot. And you always have to balance that when you you, you get all the comments uh, later on. So, uh, yes. And I think also uh, we, uh, we, we had a lot of meetings. Uh, I think we made like 900 presentations or so, so, so <laughs> that was a lot of, it, 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 I mean, MSP is like a big, 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 huge communication project. And, and if you see it like that, I think you, 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 it's easier to, to succeed in another way. Thank you. Okay, thank you Joachim for sharing this experience, but how can we ensure, how can we promote that these outcomes from all this big involvement uh, of stakeholders are later taken into account in decision making? That people do not feel frustrated, uh, that actually decisions are made on different uh, uh, positions or viewpoints? It's very challenging and difficult question, so, but maybe there are some thoughts on that. Planners with long years experience or? Yeah, well, I, can I continue or? Yes. Okay. Yeah, I think it's, uh, yes, uh, how, how do you carry all these valuable comments? I mean, uh, uh, of course, when it comes to quality assurance, you do that automatic, automatically because you want to have a, 
a plan of a certain quality and a plan that is uh, factually correct. But well, then, the, then it comes to all other types of comments. Of course, it's it's. Uh, I mean, first you 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 need to have a. Uh, I would suggest a very transparent process with with uh, well defined steps, so stakeholders know when they can participate in the process. And between the steps, you also have to provide feedback. You have to explain why you move in a certain direction or not. That's that's really important. You really have to explain why why you do certain or different choices. Uh, in our case, we uh, we did that in the former steps. We we made uh, consultation reports. And in one version, we summarized per topic and per area. And in the last report, we actually commented on each. We responded to each comment by giving an explanation why we we made this final proposal and submitted it to the government. Uh, I think that's uh, what, what you can uh, achieve with this. It's uh, not necessarily agreement because people and companies will still disagree with uh, some choices made by the planning agency, maybe later on by the government. But at least you can get, you receive some understanding and acceptance of, 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 of the result. And uh, also, uh, finally, I would say that uh, it's of course important to convey all these views and perspectives all the way to the decision maker, because normally the decision make, maker is the political level. And they are very much interested in, in the views that have come up during the process, because otherwise the decision making itself can become very troublesome. So in fact, we, we uh, happily handed over, <laughs> we made a proposal, uh, we made some statements and decisions and, and provided suggestions for the government. But at the same time, we also handed over all the comments that we had received so the government could actually see where there were diverging views on certain things. Uh, and now, as you said early on, uh, we are still waiting for the decision by the government. They are still discussing uh, in the final decision and hopefully it will come soon but i'm sure they, they had have a look uh, at all these comments uh, that we submitted to them thank mm -hmm. you thank you joachim for sharing this approach uh, how has it been in finland marie so could you so easily take up uh, comments get the consensus acceptance or you had might be different tricks to get to the decision making well, in, in, in Finland, the, the whole planning process was very collaborative. And, and with this, I mean that the stakeholders, maritime, stake, maritime stakeholders, they themselves kind of built the vision for 2030 and they built the roadmaps how to achieve this. And, and during this collaboration process, or with the help of this process, um, the maritime stakeholders, they kind of engaged in themselves into the into the planning and, and the actual plan and they can kind of I, I'd like to say that they own the plan in a way whether you are the an authority or a maritime sector representative or, or you are a planner uh, actually and and because we have a strategic plan in Finland um, kind of um, the the impacts or the how could I say the um, the impact kind of arises from its um, linked to the national regional sectoral policies and guidelines and strategies and especially uh, it's linked to the legally binding land use planning uh, done in regional level and municipal plan and that covers also the territorial sea so when we have these um, planners that are engaged into the plan and we have these maritime sectors and and they have these we have these regional programs or natural resource plans that they are also engaged in so maybe they will kind of take this plan uh, with them and and uh, try uh, kind of follow the roadmap they built for themselves and and in finland um, because we had this regional level planning uh and uh, the maritime spatial plans we have three of them that together form the finnish uh maritime spatial plan 2030 um it was approved by politicians um in coastal regional councils uh, this means politicians elected in a municipal level and they have very close connection to, to any municipal and regional development projects and strategies and goals funding and, and so on. And many of them are also members of the parliament. So we have kind of shortcut 
from local to national level and also from national level to local level. And it's just up to the engagement level, whether they uh, will, uh, will follow the roadmap and then target to the future, to the vision, for vision picture, vision, um, the vision they built for themselves for 2030. It's just up to the owning the plan, I'd say, when we have a strategic plan. Okay, thank you, Mari. And might be Pile, can you comment how it is difficult actually to get to decision making, to get uh, acceptance of uh, planning proposal in Estonia? Mm -hmm. So, but you also mm -hmm. cannot uh, get to politicians without accepting these stakeholder opinions. So, Estonia has some kind of unique conditions, if I'm right. Mm -hmm. Uh, yes, um, I think what we have witnessed uh, during this uh, three years period, uh, we have uh, prepared our national MSP is, uh, is definitely that the MSP is uh, more and more in the focus of uh, political attention. Maybe it, because of, it is because of the Green Deal and sustainability issues are uh, have become unavoidable for politicians, but uh, maybe it is the good work of our uh, stakeholders, I do believe so. And uh, of course, uh, not being too serious, but uh, in our situation, it, uh, it does help that uh, we have court cases, uh, we have conflicts between trawling and offshore wind energy. Uh, of course, the media is very interested in, in conflicts and uh, that's why we have a, a very straightforward uh, way to, to public uh, opinion, to politicians, because uh, the issues are currently very actively debated in, in our newspapers uh, and the, the rest of the media. So it does help actually, because uh, everybody knows what is uh, MSB, uh, how it should be done <laughs> and how it is done. So. Uh, I think we can uh, find uh, good issues in in these situations. But I, I think in our case, uh, it has uh, worked uh, surprisingly well. Estonia is a, a tiny country, of course, and maybe that's why quite a lot of, uh, of the information uh, gathered has been forwarded uh, to, to decision makers. So um, I think it's, uh, it's yes, working surprisingly well in, in our case. Okay, thank you. Uh all three of you. I think we have covered more or less these questions. Uh, might be still very brief statement from your side, uh, kind of evaluation aspect. What you would do differently if you would need to start again stakeholder process? Joachim, you commented that you would also created a new list. Um, that would be good what you could learn from Finland and Estonia. Uh, might be other colleagues also see what could be done additionally or differently. Hmm. Maybe just shortly mention that um, it is important to collect the local knowledge uh, mm -hmm. level uh, data, data to engage all the locals that our plan affects on. And, and we had uh, resources to make a case study in Satakunta region, but, but that is something we will most definitely do during the se second planning round. I, I think it's really important and to, to have all this collaboration process to kind of bridge the social capital. It's really imp interesting what you are doing in Estonia in, in Maria project. And, and I, I think that is some something we will do in, in Finland too. Mm -hmm. Any uh, final closure words? Yes, in, in Estonian case, it, uh, just to remark uh, that uh, I think we a bit uh, forgot about the traditional uh, marine uses. Uh, we set the focus on, on the new uses, so wind farms, aquaculture, but the traditional ones, the, the fishermen, uh, they are actually the most vulnerable uh, stakeholders group, it, it seems to us right now. We, we should have maybe paid more attention to them, maybe thematic uh, workshops and, and things like that. So for us, this is the lesson to be learned. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Pille. Still to add any thoughts? Yes. I, 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 uh, for the next round, I think we would work more actively with the uh, non-public stakeholders because uh, I mean, we are quite used to listen to stakeholders and document and respond, and that's fine. 
but you actually need to discuss with them to find smart solutions as well. Uh, and we had uh, at some stage we had a kind of thematic groups, but they mainly consisted of uh, people from public uh, authorities or municipalities or regions or, or agencies and so on. Uh, and, and that was very uh, was a choice uh, made by the national agencies to, to do it like that. But next time, I think we really much earlier on need to discuss with the uh, the non-public stakeholders uh, to find find these small solutions that we are really after. Uh, and uh, I'm, I'm quite sure the next round will, uh, I mean, we will be expected to find much more solutions and not uh, in our plan. Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you very much for your participation in this panel and I hope you will follow also other sessions and now I would like to give floor back to Inga. All right. Uh, Maybe before I'm, I try to summarize all this workshop, let's see the results of our second poll. So, regarding results of the second poll, uh, I see that uh, uh, the options were, those options were more popular, that, uh, that, uh, that has like a higher level of engagement. So, the, the activities that requires more deeper uh, dialogue, uh, more engagement process of the of the stakeholders, uh, these these approaches were more popular with you, and that's great because through these kind of activities, really, uh, really involving stakeholders in decision making processes, we can reach corresponsibility. And that's nice also to hear also and learn this from the poll. But to summarize our today's, uh, today's workshop, indeed, we had a lot of tick, we have heard a lot of tips and tricks really how to ensure stakeholders involvement. And uh, what, uh, and I hope you have learned something new also from uh, also you dear participants. And uh, I've seen that you've been very active also in the chat, uh, chat uh, dialogue. <laughs> and uh, you have the discussion also there. And um, what was uh, maybe some, some uh, some messages that uh, we can uh, we can take home <laughs> from uh, from this uh, workshop is that we should start communicating with the stakeholders at uh, earliest possible stage starting from the beginning and of course we should also communicate it afterwards not only when we are really at the planning process but also during the implementation stage and evaluation stage as well so there should be uh, developed a mechanism long-lasting mechanism, how to work with uh, our stakeholders. And of course, there, should, there are discussions uh, who, are, uh, who are the most important stakeholders, who are less. Of course, there are some groups that it's, uh, they are uh, quite easy to access, but there are also groups that it's not so easy to access. And there should be developed some tools, how work with, this, uh, with these uh, different kind of groups, and I, I think we uh, heard qu uh, quite many examples of such kind of tools, starting from the thematic working group uh, uh, model and um, also like doing this interactive uh, fun things like uh, like playing <laughs> games and um, and really interacting with uh, with the stakeholders. And of course, there should be also the political will and dialogue on the political level. So. Uh, this is also important that, that politicians are also our stakeholders and uh, that's why it should be uh, communicated also with them to make sure that MSP is quite high on the political agenda as well. So, uh, these were some of the highlights from our workshop sessions and I also would like to encourage you to contact me or to contact Christina Wedemann regarding the report 
uh, on stakeholders' involvement in Baltic Sea region. So really, uh, a lot, uh, uh, the, uh, quite impressive research has been done, and it's still uh, ongoing until the end of the summer. So if you would like to uh, communicate regarding stakeholders' uh, engagement issues, so please do not hesitate to contact me or, or Christine.